Hello comrades, as promised in the last video, here I am presenting you the topic energy band diagram, one of the most simple yet complicated topics in electronics engineering domain. Please do watch the complete video to know about the procedure and the intricacies of drawing an energy band diagram. Throughout this video, in between the topics I shall also tell you the hacks so that you can easily draw the diagrams without making much effort. So what is an energy band diagram? It is a diagram in which we plot different energy levels like conduction band, valence band and there is a Fermi energy level. Now as you can see on the paper, I have decided to explain this energy band diagram concept using two bases of classification. That is first can be bias or no bias that is applied voltage or battery and the second one is what kind of doping is there is it undoped or doped or heavily doped. The other information you can read in the video description. Now we shall begin with the first one. I have decided to start with the PN junction energy band diagram so that I can explain the same for the NPN and PNP bipolar junction transistor using the help of this PN junction diode. But before even that, I shall provide a quick insight for the extreme beginners who are first time learning to draw the energy band diagrams. The first energy band diagram you can see is of pure intrinsic semiconductor where Fermi level energy lies exactly at the middle of conduction band energy shown by EC and valence band energy level shown by EV. Now this second energy band diagram is of N type semiconductor. The intrinsic Fermi energy level lies exactly at the middle as shown above and the donor energy level lies close to the conduction band. And this third energy band diagram is of P type semiconductor where EFP lies closer to the valence band edge. Now if you are not familiar with the donor and acceptor terms you can read the video description for further information. As you can see on the right hand side till now I have shown you how a N type semiconductor and P type semiconductor when kept isolated will have the energy diagrams like this. When these P and N type semiconductors are present in the form of junction as shown on the left hand side, we can draw their energy band diagrams exactly on the lines of the information I have given you on the right hand side. So on the P side, just place the valence band energy level closer to the Fermi level and on the N side, we have to place the conduction band energy level near to the Fermi energy level. There is also a depletion region present near the junction as I have shown here. This was the energy band diagram for the PN junction in case no battery or external voltage is applied. So we can say it was no bias case. What changes come in energy band diagram when we apply a battery to this PN junction? So we shall study now the forward bias and the reverse bias cases. If I shall explain this forward bias case by comparing it with the no bias case then you can easily understand it so here you can see when no battery was connected fermi levels for the both the sides p and n they were aligned at the same level but here one side is connected to the positive and other is connected to the negative terminal so here the hack is that the side connected with the negative terminal that side's fermi energy level will go up what I mean to say is that the negative terminal being connected to N side so the Fermi level on the N side that is EFN will go up. It is important to label the bias. Here I have represented the battery as VF because it is the forward bias case. An important note the difference between ECP and ECN here will be QV0 minus VF where V0 is the built in potential. I forgot to show in the no bias case. Here you can see that ECP and ECN will have a difference of QV0 where V0 is the built-in potential due to the junction that is our depletion region present here. Now this V0 or the built-in potential present here can be expressed in the following equation given by V0 is equal to KT by Q ln NAND by NI square ln is natural log Na is the accepted ion concentration in atoms per centimeter cube and Nd is donor ion concentration while Ni is the intrinsic carrier concentration. K is the Boltzmann constant and T is the temperature given in Kelvin while Q is the electronic charge. So this is all that we should know about the built-in potential. 
This built-in potential along with the applied bias plays a very important role in knowing the difference between the conduction bands of the two sides or the valence bands. If required, we can also show the intrinsic Fermi energy level. But what is essential here is EFP and EFN. Now being done with the forward bias case, let us have a quick look at the reverse bias case also. Here is the PN junction and here is the depletion region which will be larger or wider than the forward bias case. This we can know by the expression of the depletion region width given by W is equal to under root 2 epsilon V by Q bracket 1 by Na plus 1 by Nd. So in case of forward bias, the V term is replaced by V0 minus Vf, while in reverse bias it is V0 plus Vr. Vr is the reverse bias, as shown in the figure. So talking about this reverse bias case, the negative terminal is connected to the P side. That's why as the hack I have shown you in the previous case, EFP will go up. The Fermi energy level of the P semiconductor that will go up. Comrades, do not forget this hack because it will be very useful to you in case of confusion. See using this little piece of information, you can easily make the diagram without making much effort. Here we have V0 plus Vr which is a large quantity, that's why we have such a wide gap between ECP and ECN. Now having seen enough of these bias cases, let us now study what are the effects of doping on the energy band diagrams. There is no better way to start this topic by studying about the PN junctions. See here we have highly doped P side and N side. Now I shall tell you what impact does it have. Actually in normal case of PN, the depletion region would be wide. But P++ and N++, they will push the depletion region towards the junction and it will be very very narrow. Since here we have the open circuit, that's why we will align the EFP and EFN energy level. But that's not all. There is one more impact of this heavy doping. I'll show you that too. In case of P-type semiconductor, the acceptor level you can see near the valence band energy level. But for P++, the acceptor energy level moves even closer to the valence band energy level. So here while drawing this energy band diagram for P++ and N++, we have to keep this fact in mind and we have to place the Fermi energy levels for the respective sides closer to the donor and acceptor energy level. Then as usual, we have to draw the conduction band and valence band energy levels for both the sides and this gap between ECP and ECN will be QV0 where you already know that V0 is the built-in potential at the junction. So let us have a quick recap of 10 to 15 seconds. Right now we have completed forward bias and reverse bias cases of PN junction and we know the hack that if negative terminal is connected to the side then that side's Fermi energy level will go up. Now comrades, having told you these fundamentals, it would be a lot easier to understand the energy band diagrams for the bipolar junction transistors. First we shall consider PNP transistor. Ok, so just for the record, there are 4 regions of operation in BJTs. Depending on the type of bias we are providing. Here we shall study for the active bias case. In the active region, the emitter in base is forward biased while base collector is reverse biased. So one step at a time, for the emitter base that is PN, on the left hand side N is connected to the negative terminal that's why the Fermi energy level of N side will go up. And for the base collector that is the right hand side NP, this rightmost P side is connected to the negative terminal that's why its Fermi energy level will go up. Now recall the information I have told you for N type and P type semiconductors for the isolated case. You have to just complete this energy band diagram by drawing the conduction bands and valence band. I want to tell you one additional information that we have considered here PNP. That is no doping has been introduced here but in the textbooks you will find that emitter base collector there will be some kind of doping. And comrades I have already told you what is the impact of doping on the energy band diagram. That is the donor or the acceptor energy level moves further closer to the Fermi energy level of that respective side. Now here I am showing you what if no bias is applied to that PNP BJT. So if no bias is there, no external battery is there, the EF or the Fermi energy level for the semiconductors will align. 
that is they will be present at the same level so that's all for today's video but this topic of energy band diagram is yet not over in this video till now we have discussed the pn junction diode energy band diagram which we extended to understand the energy band diagrams of the bipolar junction transistors in the next video we shall discuss the band diagrams for short key diode and mos capacitor and also some concepts like electron affinity and work function if you found the content of this video useful then please press the like button and subscribe to the channel last venture comrade